Dr. Kellyanne Nyotis reveals the surprising truths about what's keeping you up at night. Discover how nighttime habits and sleep quality affect your brain health. Stay tuned for a deep dive into achieving the restful, restorative sleep your brain needs. When someone tells us that they're struggling with sleep, we really ask them to take a deep look at themselves. You really have to figure out why you aren't sleeping. So common things that we see are doing work late at night or screen work right before bedtime. It's really hard to wind down and quiet your mind if you are just so stimulated and engaged in the work that you were just doing. Drinking alcohol right before bedtime, a lot of people will say like, well, I actually think that does help me fall asleep. And that is true. It does put you to sleep. But there's a difference between being put to sleep and being knocked out. And alcohol really just knocks you out. And by that, I mean, it really changes your sleep architecture. It causes sleep fragmentation. It doesn't allow you to get the beneficial sleep cycles that we all know help the brain, such as deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep is really important for our day-to-day emotional processing and memory consolidation. All the information that we took in during the day really gets consolidated and stored and packaged away in a nice place so that the next day you can pull it out of storage when you want it. A lot of people who suffer from memory problems actually are just suffering from poor sleep because they aren't really getting that REM sleep that's necessary for memory consolidation. And of course, that's extremely important for people who are on the path to Alzheimer's disease or already affected by it. And then when we think about deep sleep, this sleep cycle is extremely important because the lymphatic system, which is really our trash removal system, is active during this time. So what happens is there is this fluid that kind of washes over the brain and helps us get rid of things like high glucose levels, helps us get rid of toxic proteins like amyloid proteins, which we understand accumulate even after one night of poor sleep. Having really efficient and deep and having enough deep sleep is really, really critical for clearance of these toxic proteins and substances that if they lingered around too long would lead to neurodegeneration. Other things, frequent urination, that's a common thing, especially as people get older. They wake up multiple times in the night to urinate and that can be very, very disruptive because people can struggle to fall back asleep. So if that's something that you're experiencing, of course, you could limit fluids before bedtime, but it's really worth speaking to your doctor about how often you're waking up in the middle of the night and trying either a medication or investigating if there's any sort of procedure or other intervention that can be done to really help with um, frequent nocturia. Uh, other things that we see, restless legs can keep people up at night. That is something that there are lots of treatments for and something worth talking to your doctor about. Anxiety and rumination, that's a really, really big one. Are you just the type of person that you can't turn off your brain? You're running through your to-do list, all the things you didn't get to today. You have to think about how you're going to get to them tomorrow. And that process can really spiral out of control for a lot of people. Um, And everyone is different, but I I find that in these particular situations, meditation or mindfulness can be really, really valuable. Um, But in some severe cases, seeing professional help, getting therapy or considering some sort of pharmacological agent can be really, really beneficial. Not having the appropriate sleeping conditions, so not keeping your room dark, not keeping your room cool not being comfortable in your bed, whether that's from an actual mattress issue or that's because you're suffering from some some sort of pain that isn't addressed. There are so many things that can contribute to poor sleep quality. And we can continue to talk about all these different factors. But at the end of the day, you really do need to look at yourself and look at what potential things are keeping you up at night. We hope you enjoyed this video. To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org slash learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org slash donate.